Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in uh, Professor Meeks' book, Jürgen Moltmann and the Work of Hope. We're getting into the second essay now, and uh, a surprisingly excellent essay. I was surprised. Very good essay by N.E. Bedford. And it is so unique. It is a feminine Trinitarian doctrine. A feminine Trinitarian doctrine, which is uh, unique to say the least, but uh, unique with a universal thrust. Not feminist theology, but a universal theology that applies to all humanity. And so, very unique that it has this feminine perspective yet universal in nature and uh, and very, very powerful. Uh, wait till we get to block two and you take a look at the, the explication of concepts. Very powerful block two. But we're going to take a look at this. Very unique presentation of a theology of expectation, which, of course, was a gift to all Americans, but also a, a gift to this theologian from Argentina. And uh, we're going to see what she offers here, which is pages 7 to 25. And this begins with block 1, an eschatology of Mary. The Catholic Church celebrates the Feast of Expectation on December 18 with regard to Mary. The Virgin Mary was filled with expectation as a young girl, she is perceived as our Lady of Hope. Her image is also deeply connected with nature, ecological and cosmological expectation. So under this uh, ecological and cosmological expectation, in Argentina, Mary is depicted with a cone-shaped dress representing the mountains of the Andes. There is a reference to Mary as Mother Earth. Earth. In Bolivia and Peru, she is pictured with angels with red and blue wings, representing the Incas. So we have representations of an eschatology of Mary. Mariology and Christology get woven together. She is the virgin of sweet expectation, an expectation grounded in the real, grounded in reality. Material reality and transcendent reality. On earth as it is in heaven, as the scripture says. Now, Gustav Klimt produced an oil painting showing the unclad pregnant Mary surrounded by forces of death. He entitled it, The Hope. She becomes a blessing to those who look at her. This refers to Romans 8.22 where the creation groans in the pains of childbirth to bring forth the new, to bring forth the kingdom. So our first block, our first theoretical, block one is always the theoretical. Block one, our theoretical position being posited here by Professor Bedford, is first of all, it's a theoretical feminine eschatology. She is shaping our minds theoretically in block one, tuning our minds to a feminine eschatology, a feminine interpretation of Moltmann's theology of hope. Now what does that mean when regarding concrete concepts? How do you translate that theory into concept? She does not ignore that. Let's take a look at block two, the concept that define expectation. Focused cognition. We should practice focused cognition rather than reactive cognition, which employs the prefrontal lobe. And I've done a lot of study in neurology, so this definitely makes sense to me. The prefrontal lobe is the physiological realm of positing. It is, it is hardwired to your long-term memory, by the way. It plays a significant role. It is that 
physio physiological realm of positing. Visual signs of expectation are the objectivity that demands our response and demands our participation, mediated through focus or attention. So let's take a look at the mediation of focus or attention. It guides the way that we acquire information and the way we interpret that information. We then form interpretations of information, which uh, we would call a sign model. But this reach has limitations because we, as we face the unveiling of the possibilities of kingdom. Therefore, in the concrete block two, note three, focused, proactive cognition and interpretive focus equals acquisition of new possibilities. We read and join signs together to form a sign model representing the unfolding of God's kingdom. We read in John 9.39, those who do not see may see. Jesus says, I have come so that those who do not see may see. This describes our new seeing in faith. Seeing in faith in the German is Erwartung, Erwartung, and uh, expectation is watching and waiting. Therefore, we must address anticipation and palpability. Or you could uh, simply say anticipation and the becoming concrete of that anticipation. Anticipation means to take possession ahead of time. This intensifies and energizes our present experience. Augustine addressed this issue with the Latin terms expectatio and distentio, expectation and memory. The acquired word is tension between memory and anticipation. But if we're talking about the concrete realm, the reality is what about when expectation is interrupted? Because concrete reality does throw surprises at us. So she addresses this. We must address oughtness. Is expectation a human right? Yes, she says, it is linked with sanctity of life. It is linked with promise of life. The loss of hope due to unexpected interpretation must also be addressed. So she gives it an ethical context as well, which I think is great. In the concrete, in the realm of the concrete, a concrete ethical context has to be defined and addressed as well. Therefore, we have been given in block one a theoretical tuning by the author. We've been theoretically tuned to a feminine perspective on a doctrine of expectation or a doctrine of hope. We are interpreting the theology of hope from Moltmann from a feminine perspective. That's the theoretical position in block one. The concrete reality in block two is that uh, proactive cognition and attention come together in order to acquire the new possibilities of kingdom in concrete reality. And that means employing the realm of positing physiologically, that is in the prefrontal lobe, but uh, that prefrontal lobe is hardwired to your long-term memory, and that work creates that sign model through which we interpret our concrete reality and through which we minister in praxis in concrete reality through that posited sign model. After having given us the theoretical in block one and the concrete in block two, we reach your conclusion in block three, expectation is Trinitarian. And I could actually make that title, expectation is feminine Trinitarian under joy and expectation. Expectation is communal. We understand backward, but we live forward. 
Reflecting back, we then form a portrait of expectation. A sign model portrait of expectation. Conditioned by our present concrete history. As believers, we reflectively call up the advent of Christ, which imprints our expectation. The specific aspects of our reflective portrait of expectation. The advent of Christ is a perception that relates the concepts of liberator, savior, hope, grace, and sovereignty, all as gifts of spirit, guiding our actualizing of messianic expectation, which remains communal always. So it's all about this uh, very concrete liberation through the sign model portrait of expectation, through the sign model portrait of expectation. So in conclusion, block three, note three, reflective portrait of expectation and communal aspects of expectation equal expectation as Trinitarian. Now, listen to this carefully. I just love this. Reflective. This is your first step in the triad. We posit the motherhood of love. The second step in the triad is liberation as adoptive force. It's a force of spirit, but it's adoptive force as a child of God through Christ. Then the third moment is new life as the unveiling function of midwife. You've got motherhood, first moment. You've got birth force in second moment. And you've got unveiling midwife in third moment. Three feminine interpretations of expectation with regard to Moltmann's Theology of Hope. We labor in expectation. She concludes with to labor in expectation. New possibilities are God's objective expectations for us. We take up these possibilities through the adoptive force of spirit, which is a movement from dunamis, potentiality, to energy, actuality, which takes place through our participation participation in praxis. Remember, praxis is what? Action and reflection in a particular concrete historical situation. I think you'll have to agree with me here that uh, Professor Bedford offers a unique, universal, powerful interpretation of Moltmann's Theology of Hope. A unique, yet universal, yet powerful interpretation of Moltmann's Theology of Hope from a feminine perspective that remains universal. Not liberation theology, but a universal theology of the cross. And I say the cross because it's all about that midwife bringing forth the birth of new possibility, bringing forth the kingdom of God. She had to shape our minds in block one and remind us of an eschatology of Mary to give us the feminine perspective, to get us on the proper, proper alignment before she continued her essay. But she did not remain in the theoretical. She moved on to the concrete and she concretely defined concepts. So concrete that she even took us to the physiological realm of positing of the prefrontal lobe, even that concrete, which I think is excellent. And we learned that to acquire the word of promise means to be tensioned between memory and anticipation. Memory of what? Memory of Advent, because Advent is ongoing. So it's memory of Advent, which has been imprinted in the heart, imprinted in the mind, which triggers our alertness and attention toward ongoing Advent. And uh, so this acquisition of word is always tension between memory and anticipation. Attention we feel and attention we recognize in the midst of our praxis ministry. But uh, 
and then what beauty after the theoretical and after the concrete, then a beautiful Trinitarian conclusion as motherhood, adoptive birth force, and midwife unveiling. Three Trinitarian moments from a feminine perspective. A feminine perspective that remains universal. I praise her for that. I commend her for that. Tremendous essay here by Professor Bedford. Not liberation theology. This is beyond liberation theology. This is beyond feminist theology. This is universal, cross-centered, Christ-centered theology from a female theologian's perspective, a feminine perspective, and a triad of motherhood, adoptive birth force, and midwife unveiling. Beautiful conclusion to the lesson. Absolutely beautiful Trinitarian conclusion to the lesson. Moltmann is most assuredly Trinitarian in his theology of hope. But what a fresh, what a beautiful, what a powerful new interpretation of the Moltmannian Trinitarian doctrine in the theology of hope. Superb work here. Superb essay. I commend Professor Bedford. That's going to wrap up pages 7 to 25. We'll pick up next time on essay number 3.